A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Jesus is always able to save those who approach God through him, since he lives forever to make intercession for them. It was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, undefiled, separated from sinners, higher than the heavens. He has no need, as did the high priests, to offer sacrifice day after day, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. He did that once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints men subject to weakness to be high priests. But the word of the oath, which was taken after the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. The main point of what has been said is this. We have such a high priest who has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle that the Lord, not man, set up. Now every high priest is appointed to offer gifts and sacrifices, thus the necessity for this one also to have something to offer. If then he were on earth, he would not be a priest, since there are those who offer gifts according to the law. They worship in a copy and shadow of the heavenly sanctuary, as Moses was warned when he was about to erect the tabernacle. For God says, see that you make everything according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. Now he has obtained so much more excellent a ministry as he is mediator of a better covenant enacted on better promises. The word of the Lord. Here am I, Lord, I come to do your will. Sacrifice or oblation you wish not, but ears open to obedience you gave me. Burnt offerings or sin offerings you sought not. Then said I, behold, I come. In the written scroll that is prescribed for me to do your will, O my God, is my delight, and your law is within my heart. I announced your justice in the vast assembly. I did not restrain my lips, as you, O Lord, know. May all who seek you exult and be glad in you, and may those who love your salvation say forever, the Lord be glorified. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus withdrew toward the sea with his disciples. A large number of people followed from Galilee and from Judea. Hearing what he was doing, a large number of people came to him also from Jerusalem, from Idumea, from beyond the Jordan, and from the neighborhood of Tyre and Sidon. He told his disciples to have a boat ready for him because of the crowd, so that they would not crush him. He had cured many, and as a result, those who had diseases were pressing upon him to touch him. And whenever unclean spirits saw him, they would fall down before him and shout, You are the Son of God. He warned them sternly not to make him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord 
A good question of the day to ponder is, what is Jesus doing right now? Think about it for a moment. What is Jesus doing right now? We already know that he's in heaven because he ascended. And as the creed tells us, he sits at the right hand of the Father. But if that's all he's doing, that sounds pretty boring, doesn't it? Obviously, Jesus is not one to uh, just sit there and do nothing. The letter to the Hebrews tells us very clearly this morning what he is doing, what he is always doing since he ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of his Father. He lives forever to make intercession for us. Jesus is constantly praying for us. Imagine that. Well, he's God, so he can do that, you know. Try doing something always and forever. We can't. We're human. We're limited. Even though we're invited to pray ceaselessly, we know that that's hard to do. But Jesus can, because he is the Son of God. He's praying for us, and so what is he really praying for us? He's praying for our perseverance in faith, that faith that has been planted in each and every one of us in our baptism. And, but we know that that power that we've received in baptism can easily be diluted, distracted, weakened, even destroyed. And so Jesus is constantly intercessing for us, praying for us to persevere in that faith, to face everything that this world is throwing at us, oftentimes trying to weaken and distract that faith. And so Jesus is praying hard for us. We have a very, very strong ally on our side. After all, that's why he came into this world. He's praying for that perseverance in our faith so that we can increase in holiness. That's the next step in the phase, is to increase in holiness, to become that best version of ourselves that God is calling us to be. He won't violate our free will, but he will give us every opportunity of grace and that's what Jesus is sending upon us, is all those opportunities of grace so that we can grow in that holiness. And ultimately, as we go through this life, if we are responding well to that grace, to those opportunities to grow in our holiness, it will then bring us to the final step. And that, of course, is what Jesus is really hoping for with the bottom of his heart, always and for all time so that we can all be one with him in heaven someday. It's really simple. We're here to be strengthened in our faith so that we can grow in holiness, so that we can arrive safely in his kingdom. As we begin this new day together, let us ponder this fact that Jesus right now is thinking of you and me. He sees us in everything that we are, our weaknesses, as well as our strengths, the beauty that we are in the face of God, despite our brokenness and sin, he's praying for us so that someday we will be with him in heaven. Grateful for the many good gifts and blessings that God bestows upon us each day, let us now offer our prayers to the Lord. For all members of the church throughout the world, may we rely on the intercession of Jesus, our high priest, for guidance and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. For world leaders who work to bring about peace in face of conflict, may their work be blessed May their efforts be fruitful. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who suffer from physical ailments, may they turn to Jesus, the divine physician, for healing, comfort, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. For our parish community, 
May we be united in faith around Jesus, our eternal High Priest, who continually prays on our behalf at the right hand of the Father. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for the intention of this Mass this morning for Marie and Jeff Sievers. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for all who have died, especially we remember the priest of our diocese who died on this day, Father Roy J. Geenan, and for all our loved ones. May they see the face of God and rejoice in his glory forever in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, hear our humble petitions, for we ask them in faith through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 